2.6 patch notes. Patch changes. Patch notes. Patch notes. Patch notes. Finally got some real updates to this game. Crazy ton of different changes. And there's some crazy stuff in here. Stackable currency, more characters, extra shared tab. They're changing up skill builds. Otherwise, well done. I think the patch notes are pretty lackluster personally, but let's talk about the six things that really matter. Mosaic was buffed from 25% to 50% for finishing moves to not consume charges. Basically, you can stack two of them now and run around with 100%. Personally, I feel like this mechanic should just be built into the martial arts tree and we should get rid of this damn claw. Instead, maybe focus the time on unique and set claws already in the game that no one uses. But that's just my opinion. Hustle in the armor now has more fast run walk, increased attack speed, 10 all res and a level 6 evade. Huge improvement from the older version, and it's a pretty nice armor now for just a co rune. Making Hustle in a weapon, however, mixes the meta up a little bit. The level 9 burst of speed has been reduced to level 1, but it now comes with a level 1 fanaticism aura, with increased CD up to 200%. This is huge for summon builds in general. If you're a necromancer, you can now make an iron golem with it or straight up use it on a mercenary. I'm excited to use it on my Act 5 Merc with a full Sasabi set. I could see that straight up slapping. The Rune Word Cure now has a level 1 cleansing aura when equipped. I really love this addition. Put this on your mercenary when you're farming Hell and Daryl. Hopefully, can stay alive now, and it's also great to use while you farm the Chaos Sanctuary. Assassin's Trap skills now benefit from negative percent to enemy resistance. This new addition will help scale your late game damage now, and make sure you pair this with the Sunder Charm for the Pierce. This is a huge benefit, not only for Lightning Trap Assassins, but Fire Trap should make a comeback, especially while using Flickering Flame. Cold Mastery for the Sorceress has now applied one-fifth effectiveness after an immunity is broken, basically a damage nerf while you're fighting cold immune monsters. To help counteract this nerf, you basically want to stack cold facets and gear wherever you can fit them in. Terror Zones are now available in offline games. I do not like either one of those, so that's disappointing to me. I'm not sure why Sweet Phil doesn't approve. It opens up more options for Magic Vine Run content. I can already see regular Smuck's next video. Oh, I just did 24 hours of Terror Zones without using the toilet. I'm just kidding, regular Smuck. You're pretty cool, and I watch all your videos, and I like them too. And that pretty much sums up the patch notes. Pretty weak in my opinion, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Lucky Luciano has some big plans for his community this season. He'll be doing Uber services live on stream, and he intends to put the proceeds from the Uber services into SOJs for the server first declone walk. Giveaways on stream will be sprinkled in between runs such as torches and loot. He's a friend of mine, so I decided to help him out with the key grind. If you'd like to also contribute keys or SOJs for the server first declone walk, I'm sure trusted heroes in his community would be glad to kill the declone for you. I have some Diablo 4 news. Open beta release date will be revealed soon at IGN's Fan Fest on February 17th or 18th. Based off this recent Twitter post, I know a lot of you probably already dipped your little toes in the closed beta, but I didn't get an invite and I'm finally starting to realize why. All right, guys, that's the fresh D of the week. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because if you do, I might just have Mr. Llama clap for you after you finish Hellbale in Ladder Season 3. Well done.